In Learning Objective 2, we're going to look at the income statement. As I said earlier, uh, all of business revolves around the income statement. Sales minus cost equals net income. Another word for sales is revenues. Another word we might substitute for cost is expenses, and another word for net income might be NPAT. Um, earnings sometimes loosely thrown around and profit sometimes loosely thrown around, but the basic equation is sales minus cost equals net income. Uh, income statement is prepared on the same day as the balance sheet, but it's uh, vastly different. The income statement is a financial statement that summarizes operations uh, over time, typically a month. So the income statement is prepared every month, usually the, again the last day of the month along with the balance sheet. The balance sheet though is just a one day snapshot of the company's financial health in terms of what you own on the left side and what you owe. The income statement looks at operations. How much sales did you generate that, uh, that month, quarter, six months, nine months, or a year? Um, how, what were your expenses like and what kind of profitability do you have when it's all said and done? So the general equation or identity for the income statement is revenue minus expenses equals net income. Uh, we can also throw some other terms on, on, uh, on some of those. So revenues, sometimes known as sales. So sales or revenues are at the top line of the income statement. Uh, expenses or costs are in the middle. And at the very bottom line, you have net income. That's what's left over uh, when you take sales away, uh, cost away from sales. Uh, build your income statement vertically. Always build it vertically. So sales at the top, sales or revenues at the top, expenses or costs in the middle, net income at the bottom. Uh, some financial documents uh, or, or uh, purveyors of financial information have different terms for net income, many different terms. Some call it simply profit. Some call it earnings. Uh, if you read the Wall Street Journal every day, uh, you'll see the word earnings in there. You'll see the word profit occasionally, but which profit, which earnings? I'd rather call it net profit, net earnings to indicate bottom line. Uh, some companies even call it NPAT, where I worked once as a financial analyst. The first time I saw a term I saw was NPAT. Same thing, net profit after tax, and that is net income. When I look at it and analyze an income statement, I put on three sets of goggles. I put on my GAAP goggles, generally accepted accounting principles. Uh, I also look for non-cash items, and I look at time and cost. So these are the three sets of goggles I put on when I analyze an income statement. Generally accepted accounting principles you learn about in accounting. Uh, two of the more popular ones are the realization principle, uh, and that gets into when do I realize sales? When do I recognize sales? Do I uh, recognize them this month, at the end of the month, or next month at the beginning of the month? Uh, generally, most uh, large corporations work on an accrual basis of accounting, and they recognize sales or revenues when the, uh, when the uh, earnings process is essentially complete. So if you go into a uh, sporting goods store and buy a baseball cap and you pay for it with a credit card, we're going to recognize the sales right then, and the cash may come in next month. So we, if we go in the last day of the month, they're going to take the sales that day, the last day of the month, and then the cash may come in from MasterCard or Visa several days down the line. But we're going to recognize sales revenues at the point the uh, earnings process is essentially complete, not the time of collection. So the big difference between sales and cash. Uh, another generally accepted accounting principle, we try to match our sales with our costs, our revenues with our expenses. Uh, one popular item to do this is depreciation. Um, we know that some equipment that we buy lasts for a long, long time, so we try and match portions of the cost of that equipment with the sales that it generates. Um, and these are listed, the, the one most popular one, uh, depreciation, is a non-cash item. Um, there are no dollars. If you buy a Ford Explorer for your company, there are no dollars blowing out the window as you drive down the street. Uh, but you are allowed to depreciate that asset and kind of match the cost with the revenues that it generates. Two things I want you to remember about depreciation. Number one, depreciation is a highly effective tax shield. And number two, depreciation is a non-cash expense. So we're allowed to deduct it and it reduces our taxable income, therefore reduces our taxes. Uh, but no cash is flowing out uh, during the period. Uh, here's a classic example. Let's say a small store downtown goes to buy a, a delivery truck. Uh, let's pretend it's a Ford Explorer and it costs $30,000. And I want to show you this to show you how it gets placed on your uh, company balance sheet. Um, 
Number one, we post it at cost, at historic cost, as I said in a previous uh, slide, under gross fixed assets. So it's under property, plant, and equipment. Gross property, plant, and equipment, gross fixed assets is another term for it. We're going to put it in at 30000 bucks, and it will stay there on the balance sheet until we sell it, essentially, or write it off. Uh, $30,000 will be today when we buy the vehicle, year one, year two, year three, year four, year five. Uh, then we're going to show the depreciation. We're going to uh, look at the, uh, some IRS uh, charts and see that it has a five-year um, depreciation term. And we're going to depreciate straight line to zero over five years. So we're going to take $6,000 of uh, depreciation each year, and that $6,000 of depreciation expense will show up on the balance sheet as accumulating depreciation. It'll show up on the income statement as an expense of $6,000 that will reduce our taxable income uh, each year and give us a, what we call a tax shield. And then net fixed assets or net property, plant and equipment or what's left over after I take away depreciation. So time zero today when I buy the truck, it's uh, $30,000 of gross property, plant and equipment, less, six th less no de depreciation equals $30,000 today. And then on the books, and then uh, by the end of this year, when I uh, account for it, I'll have $30,000 in gross property, plant, and equipment, less $6,000 of accumulated depreciation for a net property, plant, and equipment value or net fixed asset value of $24,000. Um, so basically, and then it fully depreciates, you know you've done your work right. Uh, if you get to year five, you should have $30,000 of accumulated depreciation on the balance sheet and no net book value or net fixed assets of property, plant, and equipment for that item at the end of year five. That does not mean you couldn't turn around in year five and sell that vehicle for five or $10,000 if you've kept it in good condition. That's a market value issue. And if we do sell it and make a gain above and beyond what our book value is, we'll uh, have to pay taxes on that gain. Um, Uncle Sam would also always like uh, to tax our gains in life in general, so uh, you'll have to pay tax on it if you do sell it for more than book value at any time during the life of the uh, asset. Uh, finally, I put my time and cost goggles on, and I look at uh, the short run and the long run. In the short run, we have fixed and variable expenses, and in the long run, all uh, expenses are variable on the income statement. You may also see accountants refer to product costs, which are generally manufacturing costs, affiliated with cost of goods sold, like raw material cost and hourly wages. Um, period cost can be uh, things like uh, selling general and administrative expense. Something like an executive salary might be a period cost, which may be fixed for the short term and variable in the long run.